Yes, let me read the description of my hospitalizations in the fall of 2003. I am by turns ashamed and horrified. It is a terrible thing to be psychotic. It is a horrible, frightening, and debilitating condition. The after effects of which can last for years. I don't really remember the whys and wherefores of my raging and outrageous behavior in September, but perhaps that is for the best. I did not behave like the kind of person I am when not in the throes of madness. But madness it was, as anachronistic and moodily romantic as that term is. What else would you call it? I had no idea what I was doing or why. I was acting solely upon impulse, delusion, and hallucination. That was my reality. Schizophrenia is a psychotic disorder characterized by delusions and hallucinations. But what does a person with this disorder really go through? What is it like to live in their world? Divided Minds by Pamela Spiro Wagner. Mrs. Rosen sends us back to the classroom. I'm shivering slightly when I notice a strange muffled sound. Oh, it's kind of like people are whispering behind me, and <laughs> I'm heading towards the sixth grade wing, and then I notice something. Janet looks funny. Oh, it's kind of like she's only there when she isn't, and <laughs> then noises start again, and <laughs> I have to, I have to think of other things, like the multiplication tables, and pictures above Mrs. Janet's desk. One, our handsome, glamorous president, who just looks so much like a movie star. His baby son, Patrick, died, and I, I wrote a poem about him, and father's dead too. And I, I'm thinking about it again. <laughs> John F. Kennedy's dead. Somebody shot him and he died and it's my fault that he's dead. And because of that, I'm going to die. We're all going to die. I'm lying in bed. It's an unearthly strange just fills the room. It's like I'm in Alice in Wonderland, except that I've eaten the eat me cake and the drink me drink at the same time so that everything is wildly and frighteningly distorted. Noises seem both too loud and yet muffled, and the light seems to emphasize the foreignness of everything in the room, including my own body. I leave when the floor levels out, and I decide to take the dog for a walk so I can get out of here. <laughs> so I head to the lake. Another voice pipes in. Why don't you just die? I, I, I ignore it, but it just gets louder. You're useless. Why don't you just go ahead and kill yourself? It's not like anybody cares about you. I think about this, and somehow I decide that it's true does care about me. I'm crying when I bend down and pick up the shard of glass. Stunning my wrist, I drag the sharp edge along it. <laughs> Again, 
little bit deeper and still, it, it's not more than a scratch, I swear, but blood begins to seep out, bringing me back to myself. What am I doing? I don't want people to think I'm crazy or something. And I roll the walls in a bullet and head home. But everything's normal now. There's no voices and no strange feelings. I calmly wash off my wrist, put on long sleeves, and go to bed before my parents can notice the scratches. For six weeks. I'm in seclusion. The doctors here, they think that agitated <coughs> and is overstimulated and need to get alone for a little while. So, accordingly, patients at University Hospital are routinely placed in rooms where the only furniture is a bare mattress on the floor and I know that they think they're helping, but the absence of distractions is just making it harder to flee from the other world that I know so well. And then during one interlude that I got moved back to a regular room, I woke to the sounds of sirens. I had to evacuate and my legs turned to jelly. I collapsed on the floor. A helpless heat. Someone murmurs in disgust and tells the others to ignore me. But they're leaving me behind. Then this high pitched whine saws its way into my skull. It's like a person muscles or something, but then I think. Maybe it's just, it's just a fly, and then I start hearing guns pound, but what if it's just my heartbeat? My head is pounding, and the pulse in my neck resounds like ocean combers crashing against the rocks, but the noise, it just grows louder and louder. And then, eventually, I come to an understanding. It's an experiment. <laughs> There's hidden cameras everywhere. <laughs> this actually consoles me. A malevolent world that follows any sort of rules is far easier to bear than the cruel unpredictability of a so-called benign one. I end up falling asleep, and when I wake up, I'm relieved when my body works again. And I look out the door and people are moving about nonchalant as if what happened was just an ordinary interruption of an ordinary day and conversation and activities, they pick up exactly where they left off and it's like some sort of episode of the Twilight Zone or something and I start to wonder if I'm going crazy. I start to wonder if maybe they're trying to drive me crazy. <laughs>